Today, we're going to tackle the challenge intersection. The prompt says to construct a function intersection that compares input arrays and returns a new array with elements found in all of the inputs. Bonus, use reduce. So let's comment in our test cases here to see what we're working with. We've got three arrays, and we see that we're invoking intersection with the argument of these three arrays as elements of a single array. And it's logging 5 and 15, which are elements that are found in all three of these arrays. So the strategy that I have in mind is to compare two arrays and grab elements found in both of these arrays and compare it to the third array. This will enable us to compare the common elements between the first two arrays to the third. This strategy will work for any number of arrays in the original input array. Now let's talk about how we can incorporate using reduce in this strategy. To do that, let's have a look at the documentation for reduce. The reduce method executes a reducer function that you provide on each element of the array, resulting in a single output value. This is perfect because we want to return a single array containing the elements that are found in all of the arrays. Your reducer function's returned value is assigned to the accumulator, whose value is remembered across each iteration throughout the array, and ultimately becomes the final single resulting value. What this means is that reduce works like a loop iterating through every single element in the array and the return value from each iteration becomes the accumulator for the next iteration. This is great as we can use the accumulator as a means to store the array that will be constantly compared to every single array in the input. We can see that reduce takes in a callback function, also known as a reducer, and it has four arguments. So let's have a look at how reduce actually works under the hood. Here we're using reduce on this array of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. As the initial value is not specified, the, the accumulator becomes the first element of the array, and the current value simply iterates through the array starting from the second value, or the first index. Reduce takes in a callback that has the accumulator, current value, current index, and array, and so we're returning the sum of accumulator and current value. So for every iteration, the accumulator returns the sum of the accumulator and the current value. 0 and 1 makes 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. So now that we know how reduce works under the hood, let's give this a go. So let's declare our function intersection that takes in an array of arrays. And let's do some pseudocoding. We want to use the reduce method on array of arrays, taking in a callback, which has our accumulator and current value. Inside the reduce function, let's declare a variable that stores the comparison between two arrays. And let's call this result. And of course, we have to return results so that for every iteration of reduce, the result becomes the accumulator. And between here, we'll need some logic as to how we are accessing each element of the array, since array of arrays is every element is an array. So we actually have to iterate over the accumulator using the for each method which takes in a callback, and the parameters will just be the element. So here we're checking if the current value contains the element, and we can use the we can use the includes method. If it does include that element, which means that it's found in both the accumulator and the current value, then we push the element into, into the result array. OK, so this looks good to me. Let's give this a try. Let's use the reduce method on array of arrays. So let's say array of arrays dot reduce, which takes in a callback. This is our callback function. And the callback is the parameters accumulator Let's expand this. We want to declare a variable that stores a comparison between two arrays, and we'll call it results. So we'll declare a constant called results and assign it to an empty array. 
And of course, we want to return results. And here, we're going to iterate over the accumulator using the for each method. So we'll say accumulator dot for each, and it takes in a callback. It takes in a callback, so for every iteration of for each, it'll access the element. And if the current value contains the element and we can use the includes method, includes this element, then we push that into results. Okay, and of course we have to return array of arrays.reduce. Let's give this a go. And that's it, that's intersection.